Good morning, friends. So someone requested for me to do a day in my life with online college. And I thought that was a great idea because that is just what I do every day. Anyways, I just am doing online school now. So I'm finishing my last 26 credits of classes, hopefully, Lord willing, by mid-July. It's a lot of credits to do. It's just it's a lot. It's been a heavy load and I'm not gonna lie, these past few weeks I have been really struggling and not really struggling but just like trying to learn how to deal with all of these things. So just trying to breathe and learn how to take one step at a time. Um, but yeah, I'll take you along with me a day in my life online school. It's super fun. I actually really enjoy it. I love the classes I'm taking and yeah, I'm excited to take you guys along with me. So this morning I woke up and I just set my bed, cleaned up my room a little bit, and then started doing my quiet time. Every day I try to do my quiet time before school, before getting things done. It doesn't always work out perfectly like that and that's okay. I know that God gives me grace and um, really he wants a relationship with me. He's not like cracking down on me if I don't do my quiet time. But it's more so that out of that love that he has for me, I want to spend time with him. I want to start my day with him. And I desire that. So that's why I usually start my day with him. And I'll take you guys up there. I'm going to finish my quiet time. I took a shower. I got ready. I don't usually always get ready when I'm doing my online school and working from home because sometimes I'm just lazy. But sometimes it's actually nice to get ready because... I feel like I can be more productive and get more things done. I'm actually wearing pajama pants. I always wear these. You guys know if you watch our videos, you know I always wear these pants. Um, I like wearing pajama pants. I'm not gonna lie, and sweatpants. Anyone else? Comment down below. So I'm grabbing my coffee. This is coffee round two, and I'm gonna go head upstairs and finish off my quiet time. <laughs> time and I'm actually also taking a course on Isaiah um, through Moody so that's actually really exciting I love it when my quiet times pair up with my classes because I don't want my classes just to be something that's academic I want them to be um, really something that will be a heart changer and that will like reach to the depths of my heart and not just like the surface level academic thing so I'm currently reading through Isaiah right here. I'm on Isaiah chapter 13. And um, what I do is I like to read through the passage and I really like to just read through it pretty slowly. And um, just note, I love to note who is God in this passage. And I always um, note that in purple. Um, and so just who is God in this passage? What am I learning? about him, about his character, about his nature, because what we think about God is the most important thing about us and it will shape our lives. Um, so I just read through that. Sometimes I will go with a commentary because there are a lot of things in the prophetic books of the Old Testament that are very confusing. So I like to pair a commentary with it. This is the NIV Isaiah application commentary. Um, anything I'm using today, I'll try to link in the description. But this commentary, oh gosh, <coughs> sorry about that. Okay, so this commentary is amazing and just very practical, very great to understand. And then I also like to grab my notebook. I What I really love to journal about when I'm reading through Isaiah is one, a summary. So I like to summarize what I was reading. And then two, a prayer. And within that prayer, I just like to... Um, just kind of talk to the Lord about what I was reading, what I learned about him, and um, just pray whatever God puts on my heart. So just very simple, nothing crazy. And then I have um, 
my prayer binder. This is the Coffee and Bible Time prayer binder. I'll have this linked in the description as well. I recently have been pretty convicted that I have not been thanking the Lord enough for things in my life. So Thanksgiving, there's a Thanksgiving section in here. Um, I just haven't been as grateful as I want to be. Um, and then also the second thing is praying for people in my life. Um, I want to be way, way, way more intentional about that. And so um, that is something that I just want to continue just being intentional about is praying for the people in my life and um, whoever God puts on my heart. So I'm going to finish my quiet time today. And then usually after that, I dive right into doing school or coffee and Bible time. Okay, so I just finished doing my quiet time and I wanted to show you guys what I learned. Um, I was actually really convicted by this um, and it was really good. And this is why I'm like, I'm so thankful that I'm reading through um, Isaiah. And just like the importance of reading through whole books of the Bible so that you're not just jumping around and picking out what you wanna read all the time. I don't think that's wrong or bad, but just like when you go through a whole book of the Bible, you're exposing yourself to more of God's truth and you're not just picking and choosing what you want to hear. Um, and so one thing that I really liked that this commentary said was, some things we thought were so important will shortly be gone. Some things we thought were so important will shortly be gone. So wisdom asks, what will survive the wreck of all human accomplishments? Later it says, we should be looking to the eternal, which will not pass away. Now, obviously Jesus is eternal and like eternal life is only found in him. And so essentially what this passage is saying and what that commentary is saying is like, literally everything on this earth is gonna pass away. Like our countries aren't, aren't going to be forever lasting. Our health isn't going to be forever lasting. Our looks, our beauty is not going to be forever lasting. Nothing will. <laughs> Nothing will. And so it's saying look to the eternal rather than the things that we can just see here in front of us. And so, yeah, really that line that says some things we thought were so important will shortly be gone. And I'm just thinking about this whole wedding planning process, which you guys, I wanted to show you that the ring came in the mail. I'm so excited. It looks like this. Here, wait, let me make sure it's focused. Focus. So the ring came in the mail and I was super, super excited that it came in the mail. I was like beyond excited because it came before we expected it to come in the mail. Anyways, I was just so pumped that it came in. It finally is here and it's just, I keep staring at it. I'm like, oh my goodness. Johnny did an amazing job picking this out. But anyways, I'm getting so sidetracked right now. Sorry about that, you guys. What I was trying to say was like, during this whole wedding planning planning process, like the engagement and everything, um, it's been going like this. Like, I'm not even kidding. The whole engagement went by in a second. Wedding dress shopping went by in a second. Um, it's just everything's like flashing by. We already picked out a venue, like all these things. And I'm just realizing more and more how much of a vapor it is and how much like we, I've dreamed about getting married my whole life and like how weddings are so hyped up, rightly so, cause they're beautiful and they represent something beautiful, which is Christ and the church. But it will be one day that is here and then gone. Like it'll fly by in one second. And so just realizing like, that some things we thought were so important will shortly be gone. Like that is this earth, that is our lives, that, that is even the people we love. Like they're not always gonna be around. They're gonna be, they're not eternal like on this earth. We're gonna have to experience the pain of losing our loved ones and going through that. And so um, I guess what I'm trying to say is this was my prayer today, I said, I can't help but think about my wedding. It will shortly be here then gone. 
Lord, help Johnny and I to look to the eternal throughout this whole wedding process. Help us to fix our eyes on you. Help us to be rooted in you. And so just like I desire that like, of course that we'll enjoy this wedding and that we'll enjoy this process, but ultimately at the end of the day that like our hope and our roots would be in Christ and that, um, that it would be a beautiful day to celebrate our love and what God has brought together but that it wouldn't be our everything, that we wouldn't get so like hyped up on this wedding day that when the day's over, we're depressed and sad, but rather that we would just be happy that this is the start of our life and that we can both look to Jesus together knowing that like he is our eternal rock. So I know that was a lot. I hope you guys understood all that. I am done with my quiet time now and I'm going to get started on getting organized. Usually at the beginning of the day, I just like to get organized, make sure I have a to-do list going, look at my planner, everything like that. So I will show you guys my planner. So this is my large monthly planner. I'll try to have it linked in the description. What I love about it is that you write on here like the date and then the numbers. Um, it's just super flexible and versatile. This has been my last few semesters in college that I've filled out in here. Very good for if you have like a lot of homework or scheduling that you need to write down. But right now I am currently in, let's see, January. Um, and I will show you guys how I keep organized. I usually write out like all my meetings, my scheduling in here. And then these are my syllabi, my syllabuses. I don't know what the right way to say that is. Um, so I have three right now. Sometimes what I will do is I will write out my schedule for the day just on this like scheduling chart because that sometimes helps me stay organized. Um, just if you're getting stressed out in your days and you need to schedule your time out, I would really suggest doing that. Super simple and helps you de-stress when you have a busy schedule. But I currently have, these are my three syllabuses. They have every week here. And so I'm taking three online classes right now, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot because these are eight week sessions. So um, a lot of credits to get done in a short amount of time. But usually what I will do is I will highlight when I have something done. So for example, these were the first two weeks and I already highlighted and got those done. Um, and then again, got those done. So now I'm on week three and today I'm just going to go through and see what did I get done already? What do I still need to do? And then I will get organized. So what this app does is you can download the book or the file onto the app and then you can listen to it. So it will read it to you. And this really helps me because I am a very slow reader. I struggle with reading. I have my whole life, but I'll show you. How much continuity or discontinuity is there between the Old Testament and the New? So I will listen to this while actually looking at it as well. I'm gonna print it out. I'm gonna highlight, I'm gonna underline. And then that way I will be the best prepared to write this paper um, because I will have a marked up paper or marked up PDF that I can reference as I'm writing the paper. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, you know what I just realized? I just got this iPad for Christmas and I'm not gonna print this out. I'm gonna put this on my iPad. I'm going to mark it up on here because I can do that and then I don't need to use paper and print it out. Okay, so on here, I'm gonna use this app called Liquid Text. Um, a lot of you guys were asking about that for my Instagram and I can put the PDF on here and I can highlight, underline, mark it up. So I can do it like that. So it's really nice. So that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. Okay, so I'm 10 minutes into doing this scholarly reading, and if I'm going to be honest, I'm getting really antsy, and a lot of it's going over my head. Now I'm getting into the debate, the debate over typology, the definitions and nature of typology, um stuff like that so school isn't always um 
easy. Actually, most of the times it's not college. But it's good, it expands your mind, it expands your brain to see things that you never even would have thought of before. And into areas of study that people have spent their life studying. So it's, it's really good. Sometimes a lot of you guys comment like, oh, what is Bible school like? Is it easy? Like, is it even like college? Yes, let me tell you, it is so like college. It is hard, it is not easy. A lot of writing, a lot of papers, and I took Greek for two semesters, which was extremely hard. So it's not like a piece of cake. It's not rainbows and butterflies. It's hard, um, but it's worth it. It's completely, totally worth it. And it's such a good challenge for your brain. So those are just some of my thoughts on academia in the biblical theological world. here mama bear is making some homemade pretzels pretzels are her favorite food so she just made these they smell delicious Ooh. that was a day in my life school very dysfunctional just a bunch of sitting my butt down and getting reading done getting papers done getting homework done not very um fun vlog or anything crazy but just real life i hope you enjoyed it and I love you guys and I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching Coffee Girls. Bye.